Oh, we're still waiting. You can continue. Now. Well, uh, I'm going to be talking about nested rhythms. And, and nested rhythms are a bit of a, a different approach to thinking of EEG. Instead of looking at one peak and where it's going or another peak and where it's going, we're literally looking across the frequency spectrum for coupling between rhythms. Um, and this can be viewed in a, a couple of different ways. One is called a joint time frequency analysis, or JTFA. Uh, and we'll show you some of that data, assuming the computer comes back on. And the other one is uh, looking at it with the bispectral index. And the, the bispectrum uh, literally is a, 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 the x-axis is a frequency uh, from DC to 100 hertz, and the y-axis is the frequencies from 0 to 100 hertz. And anything that's off the 45 degree angle or not immediately on the axis ends up being a cross-spectral coupling. So if 10 and 20 are interacting, um, you end up seeing off angle uh, uh, dots that correspond with, with 10 on one axis and 20 on the other. So you'll end up seeing mirror image uh, flares coming off the 45 degree angle line. Um, this is important because we literally can predict consciousness based on this. Uh, um, the DC field potentials, since I've used the term nested rhythms, the DC field potentials when they go negative, which in EEG terms is up, all of you that are electronic uh, engineers go, well, that's wrong. <laughs> Negative is down on the oscilloscope, isn't it? Um, but EEG people are upside down and backwards anyway, so uh, that, that's not that, that difficult to understand. Let's look at nesting. This is um, a, a set of recordings in the brain. You see the spike train up at the top. This is in the limbic system, and it's generating a, a, an approximately six cycle per second, excuse me, about a five cycle per second wave, a 200 millisecond periodicity. And the other frequency is at 100 cycles a second, it's gamma. And you'll notice that the gamma is literally as a wave shape being modulated by the theta. The gamma sits in the theta nest. When theta goes negative, gamma can happen. When theta goes positive, gamma can't. Interestingly, your digit span how many numbers you can remember in a number string, is determined by how many gamma wavelets fit in a theta nest. It's like a register on a computer. How many little numbers can you hold in this register? Well, if your gamma uh, is nested well, um, you end up with approximately seven gamma wavelets in your theta frequency nest. But the entire oscillatory EEG is in the DC nest, the direct current field potential nest modulates on and off the entire alternating current EEG, which is how the uh, Kawakami turned off his somatosensory strip. He pulled the plug on the D DC uh, electronegativity, it went positive, and the alternating current EEG of the brain working literally was turned off in a somatosensory strip. So the DC fields are the base nest, which modulates the entire EEG. Uh, if you look to the literature, this is called infraslow EEG. It's below a third of a hertz or a half a hertz. So it, it's, it's extremely slow activity. You might say, well, DC, that's zero, not like 0.3 or 0.2. Yeah, but it drifts up and then down. So it has an apparent frequency, but it's really not a frequency. It's uh, simply the on and off of uh, the, the DC uh, signal. Uh, DC and gamma are the basic uh, heart of the biz index. Their secret formula is a, oops, let's go back. Uh, yeah, here we are. The secret formula here for the biz index, which is the surgical depth of anesthesia monitor, is the mathematical relationship between 0.38 and 38 hertz. Well, that's slow cortical potentials in gamma. And uh, uh, that measures from conscious to unconscious. Their index has a few other tricks for measuring the too deep, like a burst suppression detector telling you that your brain is going flat and then bursting. It's not a good sign, you're too deep. Um, and then also uh, a flat line detector. And if the anesthesiologist has created a flat EEG, you're probably a bit too deep. So. Um, 
uh, theta nests gamma. Again, that controls digit span. We've mentioned that. Let's take an, uh, an example of a JTFA display. Uh, here we have a normal, a high functioning and low functioning ADD. Here you go from slow to fast. This is 74 cycles a second. So gamma occurs in the generally from about 35 or so up. That's the red sheets that are going up that you see there. And this is a, a, a 1,100 um, milliseconds. This is an event-related synchronization, desynchronization. The first 100 milliseconds are baseline. The next, one, uh, the next 1,000 milliseconds end up being the one second of the brain responding uh, to, a, to a stimulus, a go-no-go -no -go stimulus. And basically, you can see here from the first 100 milliseconds, you get a burst of gamma one, two, three, four, five, just hits six. Gamma is chirping. It's nested in theta. You can see in the healthy, normal functioning brain, gamma is occurring in brief bursts called chirps. And those little chirps, uh, imagine that, a nest and chirps. Huh? Uh, but they called them chirps before they thought about nesting. It just happened. Um, uh, and now in the high functioning ADD, you can see that we still have one, two, three, four, five, six of them, but boy, are they weak. And in a low functioning ADD, he's missing some nests. There, there's some chirping not going on there. So literally what we have here is conscious, less conscious, less conscious. Um, and uh, uh, literally on the biz index, people that have ADD look like they're in stage one sleep. They're, they're not fully conscious. By the way, ADD is very common to have sleep disturbances as well. So um, <clears throat> the, the actual original slide was looking only at the beta synchrony. Uh, the beta synchrony takes about 500 milliseconds, although they called it here at 620, it actually occurs at about 500. And here in the high functioning ADD, it's at 750 milliseconds. And here it just barely starts to happen at 900 milliseconds. So the beta synchronization, uh, which is event related to the task, uh, ends up being delayed further and further by being less conscious. This is a bispectral index. Um, you can see on the upper right, um, this is a Parkinson's patient. When neural networks are bound and don't unlock, gamma becomes persistent. It doesn't occur in a dynamic chirp. It's on. So gamma is not necessarily a good thing. It, in fact, occurs uh, in pathology as well. The off, oop, let's go back. If you go back here, the non-45 degree angle line flares here. This is a control uh, a patient. This is a Parkinson's patient with a bound neural network that's locked. Not just bound, but locked. And it loses the dynamic. Gamma's on. It just stays on. That's pathological. And uh, as you can see, um, if you gather, not with respect to uh, Parkinsonism, but all patients, and you end up displaying all patients of all categories here, the average of all patients, you get off 45 degree angle line flaring. Here, the average of all controls, you end up mimicking this uh, display. So uh, when, when you have pathology, uh, it's extraordinarily common to, to end up seeing a lack of neural network dynamic uh, uh, shown as a bispectral index flare that's not appropriate. So. Consciousness ends up being spawned by a cross-spectral interaction between the slow cortical potentials or DC field potentials and neural network dynamics of gamma. And when those two are related, you're conscious. The implication here um, uh, for our next speaker is uh, we actually did a recording on Bill doing some healings. And uh, the implication for the model here is if you're looking for stuff that might be happening during these transpersonal interactions, uh, look for cross-spectral events that are associated with whatever these changes are that are happening during the healing. And uh, in, in fact, using the uh, bispectral uh, approach, we looked for harmonics uh, suggesting 
uh, uh, that the neural networks were activated in a different way uh, during the healing than during uh, resting or normal conscious functioning.